Rather than the long-distance runner who is frequently depicted pursuing fast-moving prey on the African savanna, our early predecessors were powerful and barrel-chested hunters who drove large herbivores to extinction while also starving out other predators. Their successful hunting altered Africa's ecosystem 1.5 million years ago, most likely driving other hominins to extinction as well. In 1984, a Kenyan fossil finder working for paleontologist Richard Leakey in the Lake Turkana Basin of Kenya discovered a portion of cranium on the shore of a dried-up riverbed. A 1.5 million-year-old human skeleton, everything except the hand and feet, was discovered after patient and thorough excavation. Given this age, this well-preserved fossil should not exist. The skeleton belonged to a boy whose shoulders, arms and legs matched those of a modern human. His body, trapped between two layers of volcanic ash, half a million years apart, was revealed by erosion 1.5 million years later. He may have drowned in the shallow shores of the lake, as teenage boys often make poor decisions. Another possibility is that he was deliberately buried, because the skeleton was virtually intact. The fact that his hand and foot bones were the only thing that were missing is somewhat mysterious, and could point a something sinister. Anthropologists estimated his height at five feet three inches, based on the length of his thigh bone, and based on the width of his bones, he must have weighed roughly 103 pounds. However, modern human growth curves do not truly apply to Homo erectus or Homo ergaster, as he is sometimes classified. The boy's anticipated growth was recently revised using growth curves that compare human and ape standards. Scientists now believe he was around nine years old, undergoing a brief teenage growth spurt comparable to ours that would have seen him fully grown by age 12. His exact age at the time of his death was difficult to determine. The lower jaw did have incisors, canines, and partially erupted first and second premolars, but no third molars were present. The upper jaw still retained milk teeth, while the majority of the permanent teeth were only partially grown. The traits corresponded to the tooth development of an eleven-year-old human boy. His bones were still developing, and the centres of development on either side had not fused in the middle of his long bones, his arms, legs and hips. This provided more proof that the youngster was approximately eleven years old at the time of his death. The discovery of this ancient fossil reveals that a proto-human form existed, barrel-chested, with a tucked-in pelvis and six vertebrae in the lower back that were clearly adapted for walking upright. His hands were free as he moved and his should blades in the modern form, implying that he could carry a spear and throw it quickly and accurately, which would have been handy. The world surrounding these first humans was changing, with woodland cover giving way to more open savanna where he would have to defend himself and compete for meat, fighting over scraps, then ambushing animals, and finally actively hunting. A decrease in the quantity of carnivore fossils around the same time suggests that his species were successful hunters who eliminated other predators. The discovery of a collection of footprints shows that males formed social groupings to seek high-risk animals, which we shall address later in more detail later in the video. Male hunters and female gatherers may have coupled up to optimize survivability. He would have been an adept tool user and hunter, as his people manufactured large and small stone tools, particularly hand axes, for scraping meat off the bones of dead animals in a climate as hot and dry as the Turkana Basin is today. On the open savanna, contact with natural fires would be common, and there is evidence that early humans managed fire and cooked releasing more nutrients from food and improving meat digestion. A high-quality diet, including 50% meat, allowed more energy to be produced, notably from the ingestion of animal fat, to be diverted to brain growth over time. Smaller teeth and jaws, as well as a lower total chewing capacity, also imply that they ate meat in addition to a high-quality plant diet, rich in berries, seeds, nuts, insects, tubers, bulbs, and especially honey. Indeed, fossils linked to Homo erectus show larger legs and shorter arms than our previous relatives, who were bipedal on the ground but still preferred to live in trees. Several current bodily traits are especially noticeable in the 1.5 million-year-old Turkana boy. 
Studies on how this early human moved and ran have primarily focused on the skeleton's legs and pelvis. For endurance running, higher breathing capacities would have been useful as well. Indeed, the evolution of the current human body shape is critical for understanding how we and our ancestors adapted to our natural surroundings. Modern humans have a relatively tall, slim body shape that differs from the shorter, stocky, heavy-bodied Neanderthals. Scientists have long hypothesized that our body form evolved with the first members of the human family in the setting of environmental change and receding forests in tropical Africa over two million years ago. Our tall and slim bodies appear to be evolutionarily favorable in the expanding hot and dry savanna, preventing overheating and allowing for bipedal sprinting over long distances in more open territory. His smaller vertebrae would have wrapped around a thinner spinal cord, which could not have transferred control of his lung capacity to his mouth to produce speech. Nonetheless, the inside of his skull contains signs of what would become our speech center, as well as an asymmetry in the extra space of the left brain, which is longer than the right. According to one theory, this extra space was dedicated to motor movement programs, which later provided the basic framework for language. Motor programming is also related to the human inclination for right-handedness. His brain was larger than any species before him, weighing around two-thirds of our modern brain, but his behavior was likely significantly different from ours. The evidence suggests that the fully modern human body shape originated later than previously assumed, rather than as early as two million years ago, our ancestors first appeared. In the study, scientists rebuilt the boy's ribcage using 3D imaging and compared it to that of modern humans and Neanderthals. They discovered that his thorax was significantly larger and more substantial than that of most individuals today. In fact, his ribcage now appears to be more similar to that of more stocky human ancestors, such as Neanderthals, who would have inherited the shape from earlier human ancestors. Scientists now believe that these modifications in human body shape may have improved breathing capacities for long-distance running and other endurance exercises. As stated, Homo erectus may not have been the slender, athletic, long-distance runner we envisaged, as evidenced by more recent fossil finds and higher body weight estimates than previously reported. This famous progenitor was probably a little less like modern humans than we have depicted. Our own physical type, with its small chest, narrow pelvis and compact ribcage, is likely to have appeared relatively recently in human evolution with our species. Previous study has suggested that this species was the first human ancient to exhibit modern human-like body proportions. Its long legs indicate that it had adapted to walking and running on two feet rather than climbing trees, as its ape counterparts do. To learn more about species' walking patterns, an examination of the feet legs and pelvis is a good place to begin. Nevertheless, in the case of Homo erectus, fossilized evidence of these characteristics is limited. But several years ago, paleontologists discovered human-like footprints near Lake Turkana's eastern shore. The fossilized traces resembled modern human feet with an arch, rounded heel, and a big toe placed parallel to the other toes. The researchers examined the eight best-preserved footprints, as well as the footprints of modern barefoot people. In most cases, the scientists discovered that these two sets of prints were statistically indistinguishable, which could indicate similar foot anatomy and mechanics. Scientists also assessed the body mass and sex of these individuals from the footprints. According to the findings, there were numerous adult males at each footprint site. The researchers argue that the discovery shows a high level of collaboration, indicating human-like social behaviors, with hunting primarily by men and gathering of plants and other materials by females. While their forefathers may have eaten scavenged flesh or caught small game, hunting in groups indicate that they pursued larger species. According to a new study, early human ancestors may have gained the ability to throw spears, allowing them to hunt some two million years ago. According to research, their skeletons have shoulders and collar bones that allowed them to hurl sticks accurately and powerfully. This would have allowed them to become a skilled hunter, able to toss weapons like spears and baseball-sized rocks at prey and other predators. 
Another study looked at the evolution of early humans' hunting tactics over the last 1.5 million years, as seen in the animals they hunted and consumed. According to the researchers, at any given time, early humans preferred to hunt the largest creatures accessible in their environment since they supplied the most food for for energy expended. According to the researchers, early humans continually overhunted huge animals to extinction or until they became so rare that they vanished from the archaeological record before moving on to the next smaller size animal and refining their hunting technologies to meet the new challenge. The study provides the examination of data on animal bones found at dozens of prehistoric sites. The findings show a steady decrease in the size of animals pursued by humans as their primary food source, beginning with enormous straight-tusked elephants, 1.5 million years. According to the researchers, these data provide an informative picture of human-animal interactions throughout the last 1.5 million years. For example, a third of the bones left behind at sites dating back to a million and a half years ago belonged to elephants weighing up to 13 tons, more than double the weight of today's African elephant, and providing people with 90% of their food. In fact, the footprints could have been left by a group of males hunting antelope or wildebeest, and shows that Homo erectus were expert hunters. Researchers investigating the site of a sequence of tracks left by a barefooted early human have discovered a total of nearly 100 footprints. They now assume they were part of a group that passed over the soft mud at the same time, possibly stalking some of the other animals whose tracks were also preserved in the mud. Moreover, this site presents some of the most compelling evidence yet that the human ancestors who left the impressions were skilled hunters. The tracks show human hunting parties looking for antelope or wildebeest, a number of individuals, most likely males, travelling across a lake shore in a manner consistent with how carnivores move. Footprints this old are incredibly unusual, since they erode away within a few thousand years. But they are also valuable because they can provide insights about behaviour. Unlike the grass-eating antelope and other hooved tracks preserved in stone, which led from meadows to the shore, the human prints all travelled in the same direction, along the shoreline. This is consistent with the behaviour of other predator species, whose prints had also been preserved. Previous research has also demonstrated that Homo erectus has the mental sharpness required to be a formidable hunter. It is not surprising that we uncover evidence of reciprocal cooperation among males in a hominin that lived 1.5 million years ago. However, the footprints are our first opportunity to observe what appears to be a first-hand view of this behavioural dynamic in deep time. This collaboration is why their descendants are the only hominins left on the globe. By around 40,000 years ago, based on current evidence, modern humans found ourselves all alone on the planet, the only remaining member of what was once an incredibly diverse family of bipedal primates, together known as hominins. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Please leave a comment and check out our channel's other videos on paleoanthropology and archaeology. Thank you and take care.